In this lecture, we are going to talk about the indicator dilution method of measuring volume of a fluid. Or simply, we are going to talk about the indicator dilution method. In our last few lectures, we were talking about the fluid in the human body and we discussed that the, there is around 42 liters of fluid in the human body. And the fluid is basically divided into the intracellular compartment, interstitial fluid and the plasma or which is basically the extracellular compartment. Now how we basically can determine how much fluid is present in the intracellular compartment and how much fluid is present in the interstitial fluid, how much fluid is present in the plasma and how much total fluid is basically present in the human body. To understand those things, we basically need to understand a simple concept, a very simple and easy concept, which is basically the indicator dilution method of measuring the volume, of measuring the volume. With this simple method, we can determine the volume of any fluid. But we simply uh, need to do, we simply need to do is to put uh, some indicator, we, we need to do uh, is to put some indicator and uh, then measure its, its concentration after being uh, put into a fluid. Now, Basically, this is uh, known as the indicator dilution because the indicator, the indicator or the dye or the fluid which we are using, it gets diluted into the fluid. It gets diluted. We take an indicator, we put it into the fluid which uh, we want to determine and then in that fluid, this indicator gets diluted. It gets diluted. And that's why it is the indicator dilution method. Now, to start, what, when, uh, what we do is to, uh, first of all, we consider the mass of the, our indicator we consider the mass of our indicator and this is our indicator here suppose for example and we know that the mass of this indicator is basically the product of volume and concentration now regarding this indicator or this dye or this fluid with which we are using we know its volume and we also know its concentration and the product of its volume and its concentration is basically its mass now there is law of conservation of mass there is law of conservation of mass and it states that the mass of this fluid the mass of this fluid or the mass of this indicator will remain the same will remain the same after being put into another fluid if no fluid is lost or there is no loss suppose for example while injecting this indicator into this fluid while in injecting this indicator into this fluid if there is no loss of this fluid then the mass here the mass of this fluid will be equal to its mass in this container now we call it mass A when it is not injected and we call it mass B when it is injected into this fluid, for example here. But there is one important thing and that is about the concentration. Here this indicator or this dye is very much concentrated. Its concentration is very much high. But when it is put into a large fluid or with, when it is put into this large fluid, then this, this indicator will basically dissolve and it will basically disperse in this fluid. So definitely its concentration is going to decrease or change. Its concentration will change because here this um, fluid or this indicator was present in small area in this much but the same indicator the same indicator has to basically distribute into a large area so basically its concentration decreases is for example this is a one spoon of sugar and it is present um, in a few sips of water then that uh, that water few sips of water for example in half the glass that will be very very sweet but if we put that sweet water into uh, four or five glasses of water then that four or five glasses of water in a large container can container will not be that much sweet because the concentration will decrease but but the amount of fluid remains the same and its mass before putting it into this container is equal to after putting it into this container. But that is a simple difference. That is a subtle difference which we have to differentiate because it is going to be helpful. So before starting the experiment, the mass of this indicator is mass A and which is basically product of volume and concentration of this indicator. After being put into this large fluid, it basically distributes and we call it as mass B here, indicator mass B. And we can say due to the law of conservation of mass that the mass indicator mass A is equal to indicator mass B because this is the same thing present here or here. Its mass remains the same it, if there is no loss, if there is no loss of fluid, if there is no loss of fluid, its mass remains the same here and here. Its concentration changes, its sweetness distributes for example, but its amount remains the same. So the indicator mass A is basically equal to indicator mass B and mass is always the product of volume into concentration. Now. What we do that once this indicator has been put into this fluid, now we want to determine the volume of this fluid. We want to determine the volume of this fluid. So when we put it here, we can say that the indicator mass B is now equal to the volume B into the concentration B or the mass B 
is basically the product of volume B in concentration B. But try to remember that it is the same indicator. Only its concentration has changed. Only its concentration has changed because it has distributed in, over a large area or in a large fluid. Now, mathematically, we know that if we can shuffle this equation. Mass is basically equal to product of volume into concentration. Mass is equal to volume into concentration. So volume is basically mass by concentration. Volume is mass by concentration. This is basically the shuffling of this equation, which is basically a mathematical rule that uh, once uh, you know two things, we can uh, determine basically the third thing. So we are basically more interested in its volume. We are basically more interested in its volume. Now, this uh, this fluid is now we are going to determine the volume of this fluid, but its concentration has changed. The indicator present, the indicator that we put in this fluid remains the same. Its volume remains the same. But we are more interested in the volume of this fluid because we know the volume of this fluid. Its mass remains the same. Its mass, the amount in this fluid remains the same, but its concentration, it basically disperses over large area. So we need its volume now or its large area. We need its volume now. So basically we need the volume for the volume. This equation basically becomes mass by concentration, mass by concentration. From this equation here, from the law of conservation of mass, we know that the indicator B mass is basically equal to mass A. Mass B is equal to mass A. So we can also write mass A instead of mass uh, B. Mass B is equal to mass A. And here we have the mass B. Where Here we have the mass B. So instead of mass B, we can write the mass A because they are equal. Mass A is equal to mass B due to the law of conservation of mass. Now we are doing these changes just to determine the volume because here we don't know the mass of this fluid. But if we look at it, we know the volume of fluid mass. Uh, we know the volume of this fluid and we also know the concentration of this fluid. So instead of writing this uh, mass B, we write volume A and concentration A because mass B is equal to mass A and then mass A is the product of volume A into concentration A. We just, you just uh, need to focus on it. This is basically a mathematical equation. It is uh, mathematical and uh, if you focus, you will uh, come to know that it's very simple as well. Now, the, the purpose is to determine this thing. Determ the, the purpose is to determine volume and to determine the volume, we uh, basically need all those values which we know. Now, we don't know the volume, but we know the volume of this indicator, we know the concentration of this indicator and we can basically determine the concentration of this um, fluid with some uh, a machine or through any way we can determine its concentration and we also know its uh, concentration of this indicator. So when we determine its concentration and we also know the, uh, the volume and we also know the concentration, we put those values and we can determine the volume of this fluid. So there is simple rule and that is the law of conservation of mass that the mass of this fluid before putting it and after putting it remains the same. So mass of A is equal to mass B and this is the same fluid. But but its volume basically changes and it's, it distributes over a larger area. So its concentration changes. Now we basically shuffle this experiment, uh, sorry, we shuffle this equation and we basically want to determine the volume B. So to determine the volume B, we put uh, those values in this equation and we can determine the volume B. Now suppose for example, with this experiment, with these values, it will get clear that suppose for example, the amount or the volume of this fluid was 1 ml. We knew that the volume is 1 ml. So we put that value here. In this equation, we put that value 1 ml instead of volume A. Now we also knew the, con the concentration of this fluid and that was around 10 milligram per ml. So we put that concentration here in this, e this equation, 1 into 10. And after putting this indicator into this fluid, its concentration became 0 0.01. Now this 0 0.01 has been determined, this has been determined through some machine or some uh, experiment, something. Now this has been determined. And when we put that concentration in the equation, we get the volume of fluid B. We get the volume of fluid B. So this experiment or this method simply means that we put an indicator and it gets diluted. So it is the indicator dilution method and we, uh, we through law of conservation of mass, uh, we uh, know that the, its mass before putting it and after putting it remains the same. If it is 1 ml, it remains 1 ml before putting it into this fluid and it remains 1 ml even after putting it into this fluid. But, but its concentration changes. Its concentration initially was 10 milligram per ml. So the concentration of A was 10 milligram. When it gets distributed over this large fluid, its concentration decreased to 0 0.01. That is the concentration of B. So 
we determine that concentration through some machine or some experiment or any lab method and then we when we put those values in this equation we can easily determine the the volume of this fluid that is basically the indicator dilution method for de determining the volume of any fluid now we are going to use this uh, method this indicator dilution method and we are going to discuss that how this method is basically used to determine the amount of fluid in the human body now that's all about the indicator dilution method thanks a lot for watching the video